Hey everybody, it's Darcy. Hope you're well. Uh, have had a busy couple weeks. I'm actually back in school and I've started my sculpture class and my print media class and my studio seminar class. Um, this video today is a watercolor. Unfortunately, my friend lost her son in a tragic bicycle accident. I did a variation of this video as a tribute for her. Um, but this video will show you how I went about composing a still image of a, um, a bicycle, which I'm sending to her. Anyway, I hope you're great and staying safe and everything's great. Take care. Okay, so this is going to have, like a lot of my paintings, a lot of layers on it. Now, the one tricky thing I did uh, when I was looking at this image, um, I said to myself, okay, I should be able to take advantage of the fact that the bike needs to be in front of everything, which kind of makes sense because it's leaning on a wall. Um, but the bigger advantage to this though is because I'm doing layering and because the bike is actually a dark rusted brown color basically throughout, that meant I could do whatever I wanted in the background knowing full well that I'll be painting over it with the bike so for example yes i did leave some spaces here you can see right there how the uh, tire is developing a form but if for example i painted too far into the tire where the tire was supposed to be the rim it i knew it really didn't matter because i would be painting darker colors over top of it in a glazing layer so i really took this to my advantage as best as i could just as a comparison, you can imagine if this was a bright yellow bike I was trying to paint. If that was the case, I would have to be, make very sure that none of this brown or anything got into where the yellow paint would be because with watercolors, you would be able to see that paint through the yellow bike and that's not what you want. So I used, there was probably with the palette, I bet there was uh, four different types of brown. Uh, that one right there I just used, that's quinacrodone gold. Um, I also used reds. I went off the palette, the brown paddle, a little bit um, and threw in some oranges that were very complimentary. Some reds as well for the uh, more rust spots. And a lot of people probably know this, you'll see some blue in the background. Essentially as um, iron and metal oxidizes, it, there's sometimes a blue tinge to it. So there's a, a little bit of blue in there. Now the other thing about this uh, and the importance of using a reference photo, because I use reference photos all the time. Um, you, When you're looking at the picture you can see how the wall in the back has some paint chipped off it and again it's rusting through there. Uh, above the, uh, the gears for example you can see that's going to be uh, largely a white wall and at the very bottom you can see it's not rusted but there's just different colors of paint uh, again indicating the wall itself so what am I trying to get at um, if you're looking at the picture the reason the paint got scratched off on the wall where it is was because the bike over the years was left up in different spots against the wall and maybe for example the owner of the bike skidded in and chipped some paint um, but it was all because of the pedal and the gearbox um, that you can see there. So I wanted to make sure um, I followed the reference photo and kept that same paint chipped area, which is now a rusted color, at the same level. Um, and again, I'm repeating myself, but so at the very top of the painting, you wouldn't want to see paint chip because nothing was chipping the paint. The bike as it was being left uh, when it wasn't in use was only chipping where the... Uh, the, the pedal was and the gears. So other than that, it's a, it's a pretty easy painting to do if you're looking at something like this, but I can't stress enough that uh, probably one of the most important things was um, following the reference photo and having a dark object in front of all the light objects. So just at the very end here, um, filling in the paint at the back because it was worn, it wasn't like a fresh coat of paint. It's just a lot of dry brushing that I'm doing and it's definitely up and down. And there goes the tape. And here's the final product. Please like and subscribe if you like videos like this. And I appreciate you watching and hope you have a great day.